but what he did, you can't deny it. It's been a long goodbye. It's been a forgettable season, no question. But Coach Bray will be remembered for being Notre Dame's all-time winning as coach, for winning a 2015 ACC championship, for getting to two Elite Eights, and what his team is hoping and what will be the best crowd they've seen all year here in his forgettable season to provide a moment for Coach. Pitt on the other side, they're trying to hang a banner and get into the tournament for the first time since 2016. They ain't here for the emotions. This is the ACC on ESPN. Pitt coming into this game knowing a win guarantees them a double buy in the ACC tournament and at least a share of the ACC regular season title. The Panthers ranked 25th in the AP poll. First time in more than seven years that Pitt has cracked the AP top 25. Nelly Cummings, the fall away, and rolls out. Rebound tapped up into the hands of Nate Leshesky. This Notre Dame team comes in having lost seven in a row. Obviously, there's going to be emotion in the building tonight for the home team. How do they channel it? Just try to keep within themselves, play for each other, and get back to what this team was supposed to be, being efficient. And in that first sequence, Dane Goodwin with his back to the basket is exactly that. Starting five for Pitt. All five starters scored in double figures over the weekend against Syracuse. Jamarius Burton knocks down the jumper. He flirted with a triple-double over the weekend. They had Nelly Cummings, who handed out 13 assists. For Notre Dame, no J.J. Starling tonight. The Irish, without their star freshman, battling some knee soreness. Marcus Hammond, the Niagara transfer, in the starting lineup. Live ball turnover. Numbers for Pitt. Here comes Burton. Pulls up and hits. Burton so cerebral in the open floor. It's like the game slows down for him. Never rushed. Composes offers with the little float game. And he's developed a rhythm here early. Three on the way, and it's good by Cormac Ryan, who had been below 30% from three in his last seven games. I like Pitt playing fast, trying to get up and down, even off makes. Try and challenge and test the athleticism and the defensive fortitude of an Irish team that struggled to guard all year long. Federico sets the screen for Burton. Lob down low, Federico, Federico, able to corral it, drops it off for Hinson, no foul, and here comes Goodwin for the Irish. You'd love to see Federico with the advantage on Ryan, keep the ball high and finish it. Hands not as sturdy as you'd like them to be for the sophomore. Hammond lines up a three, back iron, rebound Burton. Irish aren't sending guys to the backboard offensively, more concerned with getting back. Burton, no good, offensive rebound Hinson, Battling down low, lost the ball. He'll fire from the corner. It's good. He hit six of those on Saturday at 22 points in that game. And we get a whistle, a foul. is going to be assessed on Pitt. It's going to be a technical on Jeff Capel. And it might be words from, from Greg Elliott here. We're trying to figure out some confusion. Is John Gaffney on the call? Coach Capel not happy. And this gets the crowd ignited, an otherwise quiet crowd to start this ball game. Let's see, Henson gets ball knocked away from him, composes, delivers from three. And I don't know if it was Henson that had words. Hard to see, but Greg Elliott came running over the officials. Coach Capel's pleading his case. We'll try to figure this one out. But it was clearly something verbal that came from either Henson or Elliott. Stay tuned as John Gaffney's making his way over. Now the foul is called on Henson. Choice language from Blake Henson. John Gaffney always all over it, said the last thing he wanted to do was call a whistle early on in this game, but when Blake Henson uses language that is not acceptable right in front of an official, that's what's gonna happen. Now Henson trying to laugh it off. Goodwin hits the two free throws. Trey Words has scored in double figures the last two games. Had the mismatch on Federico. Now it's Ryan, open three, good. Back-to-back -back threes for Cormac Ryan. 
And it's 10-7 Notre Dame. Pitt failing to communicate. Federico tentative to get out there and guard Ryan. Advantages to be had for an Irish group playing five out with Nate Lashevsky on the floor. Now they're going to get Hammond with a foul as he got tangled up. And it, it, this is all day. Cormac Ryder shoots about 36% from three. Cummings late getting out. That's the first delivery from Ryan. And then he gets another one a sequence later, starting to heat up. The Irish do a lion's share of their work beyond the arc, much like the Panthers. Hanson using his size down low, gets the basket plus the foul. That's just toughness. That's Blake Henson saying, I'm bigger, I'm faster, I'm stronger. Just bully ball down on a low block. Henson so skilled beyond the arc, but with his body type, he can do a little bit of that too. Good one, just overmatched. It's becoming a tired refrain. He's got a typical pit forward body type. Yes. These are old bodies. These are old guys that know how to play within what God's given to them, and they've been taking advantage. This group's having a great year. These are grown men on the floor right now, both of these teams amongst the oldest in college basketball. Hammond. Now it's Ryan. Henson all over him. Skip pass. Hammond got Federico in the air and knocks down the pull-up. Again, Federico being uncomfortable having to on the swing pass close out. That allows the guard Marcus Hammond to attack said close out and pull up for the mid-range. These are ideal matchups early on for the Irish. Essentially a five-out lineup for Notre Dame. Lyshevsky 6'10", but he plays more on the perimeter. Burton's three offline, works the rebound. Ryan wanted his third three, and he is fouled. Three shots coming. The foul on Greg Elliott. The Irish playing a little inspired early on. They lead Pitt by three. Final home game is Notre Dame. Head basketball coach, including my broadcast partner tonight, Jordan Cornett. I got called an Irish great. I, I don't know if we're fact checking. You, you want to go with Irish great? You want to go with that? I just call it Irish player. Was what I was. But some some talented guys. Robbie Kerr is next to me there. Troy Murphy on hand. Maddie Carroll, Dave Graves, Turin Francis, Rick Cornett, Colin Falls, Kyle McElarney. Pitt fans even recognize some of these names because Pitt, going back to the Big East with the Irish. There was an enjoyable rivalry versus the Carl Krausers, the Chris Tafts, the Sebi Troutmans, the Ontario Letts. You know, those were some fun Battles. rivalry games back in that, that Big East. Now, talking to Mike Bray at shoot around, he said the emotions of tonight didn't get to him until he saw all those former players, yourself included, at shoot around. Yeah, it's been pretty cool. A, a lot of guys who spanned, you know, the 23 years with Coach did a lot of winning with them in you know, every program. There's a brotherhood. I mean, the Pitt Panthers share that same thing. That camaraderie is what college athletics are about. To be able to share that on Coach Bray's last night, as much as it's about coach, it's equally about the program over those 23 years and the relationships cultivated. And Mike Bray built something special. He inherited a Notre Dame team that had been relatively dormant for a decade. Matt Doherty, in his one season, started to get things turned around. Bray comes in his first three years. You were there for season two, three NCAA tournament berths, and uh, they had been a consistent winner for most of his tenure. Kind of the same page of what Coach Capel's got going on right now, build an old group and win with those old guys. Notre Dame couldn't do that this year with an old group, but traditionally that's what Bray has done. Coach Capel has taken that to great heights this season with a lot of old guys who come from other winning programs and brought a culture here to Pitt's, Pitt's, uh, Pitt's program. A wild layup by Cormac Ryan, and now it's Nellie Cummings operating the other way. Henson backing down Wirtz. Almost traveled, it's tipped, and a steal. That's, that's a great matchup for Nate Lashevsky with Federico having to defend outside, gets him on the bounce. Finds good when high percentage look. Got to be able to complete those if the Irish are going to be upset minded this evening. Meanwhile, it's Burton at the other end. He's got six, almost half of Pitt's points. A microcosm of the Irish struggles. Goodwin misses the shot. Sulk's getting back. Burton waits for nobody. That's a winning basketball player that takes full advantage. Here comes Goodwin, baseline drive. Nike Sabandi in there for Pitt. Van Allen Lubin. 
coming off a career game in there for Notre Dame. Worse. Drive, kick, Goodwin's three. There is a foul call down low. And it's away from the ball on Notre Dame and Wirtz. Nelly Cummings, a fantastic job of reading that Wirtz was coming with momentum, stood in there, positioned himself off with his body up to the basketball guards. The Hedy Colgate transfer, making plays defensively. Zona into the game as Lasheski goes to the Irish bench. Here's Nike Sabandi, one of the top sixth men in the ACC, and he knocks down the three right off the bench. And Nike Sabandi bucks the trend. Normally you come off the bench and go, he's into it. Get a layup, get a mid range. Now my man is a gunslinger and knocks it down, and he's been doing that all season long. It's like you in the weight room. There's no warm up rep. What's a weight room? What's a workout? Hammond from the corner, the Niagara transfer. Two-time first team on Metro Atlantic. <laughs> kind of what we expected early on, Anish. Whole lot of offense. Two teams that you know, can be vulnerable defensively. Pitt, obviously, a better defensive squad. But when they're struggling to separate, their defense is lagging. And it's struggled to defend some of these three-point shooters this evening. Burton backing down Hammond. The turnaround too strong, and the rebound by Ryan, the three-time captain, 24 years old. Hammond down low, Lubin blocked at the rim, gets it back and puts it in. Ben Allen Lubin has a chance, if he stays the course here in Notre Dame, to be a special player. Incredibly raw, but has the physical attributes. The ceiling is very high. He battled some ankle injuries earlier this season. Henson left it short, rebound to Federico. Cummings offline, it comes to Goodwin. Lubin last time out, 19 points in a season high, 32 minutes. Hammond rushed it, it comes to Henson. Both teams above 50% from the field. Good ball movement, Sabandi the open three. No good, but a good look. Look, if you're not a three-point shooter, you don't have to go home, but get the heck up out of here. I mean, everybody's hunting the three-point shot here in the first nine minutes of basketball, as we expect. Pitt two of seven from three, Notre Dame three out of five. Federico helps. Now it's Lubin who stepped on the baseline. <laughs> Notre Dame activating that three-point shot, three of five there early on. Getting it going, and it's the lucky lefty, Marcus Hammond, delivering in his final home game. People played for Mike Bray when Bray was an assistant coach at Duke. They spent two years together. That 94 team was a national runner-up, and Jeff Cable earlier today said, even back then, Mike Bray kept things loose. That has always been part of his persona. One of the first things Mike Bray said to me at shoot around today was, I'm so happy for Jeff. That's the ACC coach of the year. Jeff Capel has had a sensational season with the Panthers. They go way back. A ton of mutual respect. A ton of camaraderie. A real kinship. A real friendship between those two. Yeah, and it's been long standing. And look, Coach Bray is just one of many in the long line of Guys that really appreciate and respect Coach Capel. Uh, credit to the athletic department there staying the course and believing in him, and he's paid dividends. This guy's been innovative in how he's put together this roster. He's restored the culture and the tradition at Pitt. And they're a front brand of basketball to watch currently. And by front, I mean fun. F U N. <laughs> I caught it. <laughs> Burton off the window. He's got eight. And Burton, I, I love his game because what he does is size up defenders, attack gaps, and uses that body to create some space. He's done that a few times here early on. Pitt and Notre Dame, quite frankly, getting to wherever they want on the floor here offensively. Both of the Diaz Graham twins in there for Pitt, Jorge and Guillermo. Both seven feet tall, Lyshevsky doesn't care, finds the baseline. And this is an interesting move for Coach Cable because the Irish have four, got five guys on the floor that play outside beyond the arc, so this length is gonna be challenged. 
Can they win on a backboard? That's the expectation to take advantage. Ryan had knocked down his first two threes. He's missed the last two. He's got nine points, though. Four-point Irish lead. Notre Dame has lost seven in a row. Pitt alone and first in the ACC. We welcome our viewers on ESPNU. Notre Dame with a four-point lead on Pitt. 9.58 to go first half. It's Mike Bray's final home game as Notre Dame's head basketball coach with Jordan Cornette and Ishraf courtside. 30 former Irish players in attendance today. An emotional setting here at Purcell Pavilion. You got a Notre Dame team that's playing for its coach. And you have a Pitt team, Jordan, that's playing for everything. Yeah, and the Pitt team has more on the line, quite frankly. And this is a group that needs to up the ante defensively here. Too many clean looks for the Irish. Better sequence there defensively, but the Irish getting whatever they want, shooting above 50%. Pitt needs to lock in there. Pitt comes into this game in first place in the ACC. As Guillermo Diaz Graham misses the three. With a win tonight, Pitt would secure a double bye in the ACC tournament. They would also clinch at least a share of first place in the ACC in the regular season as Henson goes strong to the bucket coming off a 22-point game against Syracuse. Henson continues to give this team that lift emotionally, but he's been productive, nearing double figures, and he's been in attack mode, not just settling for the three, but attacking closeouts a few times here in his first half. Marcus Hammond, a transfer from Niagara, down low to Dane Goodwin. Backing down Nike Sabandi. Goodwin can't get it to go. And the pit group needs to do a better job of pushing it. I think there's a real advantage to them trying to get an attack mode, try to play downhill, and to chase that early offense a little bit more. Pitt's getting some good looks. They're not falling. Henson misfires. And tangled up at the other end. Robbie Carmody, who's in there, along with Guillermo Diaz Graham, but Notre Dame cashes in with Marcus Hammond. Burton wants it. He's matched up with Carmody, who's battled a number of injuries throughout his career, has not played much this season. Sabandi, the drive and kick. Elliott. Beats the shot clock and the rebound to Goodwin. Elliott came into the game shooting 49% from three over his last 11. And the Irish are now going to look to slow this pace down. Have a two possession lead. They're going to try and work some clock and try and take a pit offense that can be explosive out of their rhythm. Words on the drive, the kick. Leshesky lines it up. No good. It's an Notre Dame team right now that's just not very deep. JJ Starling out again with a knee issue. Marcus Hammond playing today, but he missed the game over the weekend with a sprained toe. And just not a lot of depth The Sabandi drives hard and draws the foul. Marcus Hammond been getting it going offensively for an Irish group that is in a groove. The lucky lefty getting downhill with the offhand lays it in. It's a BK. I mean, let me tell you, Nish, Bonzi Colson was a problem on the floor. Remember that 2015 ACC championship team and then talking with Coach Capel over the last year, just reminiscing on some of, you know, his coaching experiences. He said, Coach Bray's Bonzi Colson was the guy at Duke that we just couldn't stop. He was just such a problem, so good around the basket. His awkward delivery was so hard to guard, and he was so productive and efficient. And Bonzi was one of those guys over the 23 years that made Coach the winningest guy in program history. And if you look at where this season has not been able to replicate the success of last year, they have not had that low post scorer who's been reliable. Paul Atkinson was terrific last year as a transfer. They've had Colson. They've had Luke Heron Goody. They've always had that Zach big August, body. Yeah, Jack Francis, Cooley. Jack Cooley, a lot of guys. 
A lot of guys. And that's been missing from this group, that toughness with that safety valve down low to generate offense. Hammond defended by Henson. Entry pass down low. Lubin blocked and fouled by Federico Federico. Good uh, delivery from the wing from Wurtz to pass that on an angle where the seal off from Van Lubin, Van Lubin allows him to catch and almost in rhythm catch and deliver at the hoop and draw the foul from Federico. Good execution on a low post pass. Van Allen Lubin, freshman from Orlando, career high 19 points Saturday in the loss to Wake Forest. We remind you, Thursday we've got a triple header for you. Top 10 and bubble teams involved. Michigan, Illinois at 7. Arizona State against number 4 UCLA. That's at 9. And the nightcap, number 8 Arizona against USC. Hit just 2 of 13 from 3. Sabandi launches and hits. That's his second triple. And he's got seven. Cormac Ryan needs to get up in and defend a little bit better. Take Sabani's rhythm dribble into the three away. A little too lax. And Sabani's a bucket getter. You can't give him that comfort in that space. He'll punish you every time. Three from Hammond rattles in. That's going to be the challenge for Federico against Notre Dame style. He's going to have to come out to the perimeter more than he would like. Yeah, and these are clean three-point looks when Federico has been the chief perimeter defender. Nice move by Cummings who gets the roll. <laughs> Cerebral move from Cummings. Couple probing dribbles, waited till the gap was, was presented to then attack. And now Pitt's going to try and speed this one up, shorten the shot clock, apply some full court pressure. I like it. They need to speed up the Irish, allowing that Pitt explosive offense to get some stuff going the other way with pace. Goodwin on the drive, trying to maneuver around Henson, nowhere to go. Shot clock at seven, Ryan's three rims out. Sabandi using the screen. Cummings had 13 assists on Saturday, averaging eight assists a game over his last four. Wants the clear out. Sabandi driving. Sabandi on the catch, stepped out of bounds on that baseline. Far court. Leszewski back in there for Notre Dame as Lubin heads to the bench. And so this elevates the challenge, right, for Federico as a defender because now Nate Leszewski, even at 6'10", that's a perimeter three-point shooter that's hunting that first and foremost. Yeah, essentially five out now for Notre Dame. Again, they get Federico on the switch. Down low, Leszewski. Three-pointer is good by Wirtz. And again, that's Federico chasing. That's Wirtz and Irish are doing a, a sublime job of understanding the vulnerability is Federico, the defender, find the shooter to catch with rhythm. Burton coming in at the scores table for Pitt. Let's see if Pitt decides to go small. Sabandi off the shot fake. And traveled. And Federico checks so many other boxes for this group, even the sub with Burton. It's going to be for Sabandi because they like his rebounding ability, his length. And they do, if they're going to keep him out there, they need to try and explore getting him in touches down low and try to challenge the interior defense that's been lacking from the Irish all season. Yeah, try to play to some of his advantage. Words for three. And Federico has been a much bigger offensive contributor the last few games. They also like him as a big screener to open up things for this group. Right, There's the touch. big height advantage on Ryan. You gotta Federico. win this matchup. You gotta win this one. Match him down, drops it off beautifully for Elliott. When you talk about the ceiling of Federico, there's the field. And when you look at his body and all that he presents, that's when you're like, okay, this young man can be dangerous. And he is just scratching the surface, a sophomore junior college transfer.
you got to keep going at Federico as he's trying to defend Cormac Ryan over the runoff screens. Instead, it's Hammond who's had a big game. 13 now on senior night. His Notre Dame high is 19. Three of four from the three-point line, and this is who they thought Hammond could be. Injured early on in the season, and never really got into the flow, but feeling it this evening. He was supposed to be the starting point guard. Sprained his MCL during the preseason tonight. Three of four from deep, five of seven from the field. One, and with that age and experience comes production. This game features 9,000 point scores. That's insane. And Greg Elliott for Pittsburgh is 30 away for making that 10. And what stands out to me with this graphic, five of them are Irish and the season that they've had. The three, four now, with some man, or looking at Henson, those four guys and what they've achieved for Pitt and how they've elevated this program. But I'll, I'll say this time and time again, as productive as those guys have been, it's the ability for all of them to mesh as teammates. Coach Capel's never had an issue bringing talent in here. It's the personalities and the chemistry and keeping a sound locker room. This talent has that. This is a winning group that's poised to do a lot here in March. Right now, Joe Lenardi projects Pitt as a nine seed. Panthers in the top 25 this week. First time that's happened in more than seven years. Go back to 2016, which was the last time Pitt went to the NCAA tournament. Chesky, size advantage, uses it. It has to be automatic. It has to be automatic. When you've got Cummings matching up defensively, that's a 10-inch advantage. That has to be a bucket every time. High IQ basketball, high IQ execution for the Irish here in the first, first half. Cummings on the drive, snakes in, falls back, and the rebound to Wurtz. Disciplined defensively from Wurtz. Didn't bite on the head fakes, made a meat at chest, and even contested on the offering from Cummings. Here's Ryan, baseline drive, and one. It's very plain to see that this, this crowd here in Notre Dame, because of the emotion of Coach Bray's final game, it's fueling this group. Cormac Ryan on the catch knew exactly where he wanted to go. Burton was not in position to defend. Help comes late from Elliott. Cormac Ryan's able to finish. This group is energized because they haven't, quite frankly, played in front of crowds like this all season long because of the season they've had. Ryan gets the free throw. He's got a dozen. It's an 8-0 Notre Dame run. Now the Irish this season have lost four games where they've been up by 10. Closing games out has been a different story, but they have been fueled here with this crowd and with all that surrounds their head coach, Mike Bray, this being his final home game. Burton, wild shot. Federico using the long arms. Had that deflected by Leszewski. It's batted around. And it comes back to Federico. New 20, Sabandi, drive and kick, and a blocking foul. And it looks like Cormac Ryan picked up his first. Mikey Sabandi a little bit out of control into the traffic. We've got the luxury of the replay. Works gets blown by. I, mean, I, I don't know how that's not a charge. Pristine position from Cormac Ryan. And the, the chorus of boos for a crowd that's been engaged for quite honestly the first time this season. Now Joe Lenardi in his email to all of us today said, Pitt just has to win one more time. Anywhere, anytime against anyone, and they are a lock for the NCAA tournament. Now on paper, that seems pretty good, but if you lose tonight, you still gotta go to Miami this weekend. And if you don't get that one, now you go to the ACC tournament facing a must win. It's not an ideal spot, but again, this game on paper presents a much different challenge than what it says on paper because of the emotion in the building. This is no easy out for Pitt this evening. Goodwin using the shot fake, lines it up and knocks it down. Timeout, 
Jeff Capel. Seven for Goodwin. Notre Dame with a 14-point lead on number two. Defense getting good looks, exploiting weaknesses of this pit defense that has not been engaged to the level they need to to win on the road. And Coach Bray's final game, his shirt is still on. But if they keep playing like this, he may come out in the second half topless. Now maybe he takes the shirt off when he's at the linebacker tonight. He's never been to the famous Notre Dame bar. Sabandi misses on the drive. But Bray was saying yesterday they're going to close that place down tonight. My wife's listening. Let me be very clear. I ain't shutting anything down. I'm a father of three. I ain't shutting any bar down. It's not my last night here at Notre Dame. I'll be back. So I'll go in, a couple of hugs, share some old stories. I'm getting out of there. Savvy veterans move to put that on the public record for Shea. <laughs> Linebacker's not for everybody, Anish, let me tell you. Trey Wirtz picks up his second foul. Irish don't really foul a whole lot among the fewest in college basketball. But two on Wirtz, Hammond has two. And Federico at the free throw line. Last two games, 12 of 14 from the line, just 65% on the season. This is a one and one. Go to Notre Dame. 50 seconds to go. The Irish in the first half, 54% from the field, 7 of 14 from beyond the arc. The pit struggles have come from deep. They hit 16 3 Saturday against Syracuse, just 3 out of 15 so far. This was Coach Capel's concern. Defensively, his perimeter group being locked in and doing the job beyond the arc. Quite simply, they have not been up to the challenge here in the first 20. Good one posting up Sabandi. Lost it. Sabandi had it for a moment. And a foul is going to be called against Notre Dame. Too slow developing from Dan Goodwin. And I, he likes to get into that wheeling and dealing backing you in. But if there's no advantage, it can't be a bevy of pivots moving. Irish have had success moving to basketball. And now you give a pit team a chance to cut into the deficit without the clock moving. Well, that is two now on Goodwin, and it's still a one and one, so Sabandi will get free throws. Pitt, an excellent free throw shooting team. Sabandi at 84%. And he misses that one. Go figure, Pitt. One for five at the free throw line. They came in shooting 81% at the line in league play. It's a group that's playing like they sense the pressure of what's in front of them if they can achieve this evening. Now we've been seeing that around the ACC. Results that don't align with the standings. And on the road against NC State, Virginia. Miami, they'll go to Miami this weekend. A projected nine seed. The difference between winning and losing today. Win, double by in Greensboro. You clinch a share of the ACC regular season title. You lose, you inch toward the bubble. Look, this is a group that's only lost twice dating back to the end of January. But in those losses, Coach Cable is quick to point out they need to be better defensively. Can I get a stop here in the final sequence? In the final seconds, Wurtz heaves it up. Almost went in. Would have made sense after what the first 20 have been for the Irish. A motivating performance on an emotional night. Pick going to the locker room. They got to see more fight and more focus defensively if they want to steal one on the road. Notre Dame ending the first half on an 11 0 run, holding Pitt without a point over the final four minutes of 15 from downtown. Look for Pitt to be more engaged defensively, defending that three-point line, showing hard as Federico recovers well. This group is going to have to be attention to detail and defend with a sense of urgency with how the Irish are shooting. Nate Leshevsky drives through the contact. It's Ryan, back iron on the three, tracked down by Goodwin, and a fresh 20. Leshevsky on the drive of the finger roll. Again, challenging Federico. Federico closes out, does the job. 
Guard-like skills from Lashevsky. Blow by finger roll finish. You see the game summary. The disparity in shooting percentage. Striking. It's just very easy, good looks, and within the DNA of how the Irish like to approach it. Hits and getting going in the second half, paramount. Hasn't done a lot of his work beyond the arc here this evening. He's been really attacking the goal, but that perimeter shot going, huge for the Panthers. He's got a dozen, his second three. He had made 11 threes in his previous two games, and that's way too easy for Goodwin. Irish just making Pitt defend in space. And it's been a struggle, continues to be in the second half. Pitt's largest lead was 16. Stagnation for Pitt. Elliott's been a non-factor tonight. Picked up a couple of fouls in the first half. Federico down low and able to get to the free throw line with the big size advantage on Hammond. And that's three on Marcus Hammond. And they need Hammond because he's been hot. Federico continues to flirt with danger though. On these catches down low, he neutralized the basketball by bringing it low with his size and length. Keep it high, elevate, hoof that thing. Leave nothing to chance with the smallest defender. Hit one out of five at the free throw line. One for six. Big Saturday on the ESPN Networks. It is a sonic blockbuster, Kansas. Number three team in the country going to Texas. North Carolina Duke, is that a win and you're in for UNC? Certainly feels like it. I still believe, call me crazy, I believe this Carolina team can go out there in Greensboro and become an AQ team by taking it. When they're locked in like they have been and shooting it well, like they have been, this team is very dangerous. We've seen it happen before. Blake Hinson got the offensive rebound after the two Federico misses. And he goes to the line. That's an area where Pitt can exert its will. Notre Dame struggles on the defensive glass. They rebound 20% of their misses. That's among the worst in Division One. Yeah, and this is a Pitt team that's generating second chance opportunities. Need to be more punishing. Eight offensive rebounds, only three second chance to show for it. Got to start to capitalize off these second looks. Took eight more shots than the Irish in the first half, and yet still trailed by double figures. Yeah, and that's been the issue for Notre Dame. They've struggled to create those extra possessions. Yes, they don't turn it over, but Notre Dame does not get offensive rebounds. They don't get a ton of steals. They don't get a ton of blocks. And it all generates back to there's a lack, there's a lacking of toughness where the opponent's been able to flex their will and decide the type of game that's going to be played. We've yet to see that from Pitt this evening. Lubin working on the smaller bird. Again, you're just seeing matchups being exploited, whether it be the perimeter defense or a big like Lubin challenging Burton to defend down low. Burton, the lob to Federico executed beautifully. Good win today playing in his school record 156th game. One more than Nate Leshevsky. They're not going to defend Lubin out there. Shot clock down to 10. And they're showing hard with Federico. Lubin's got to demand that basketball as a dive guy. There's going to be a sense of urgency for the passer to deliver. Ryan beats the shot clock. No good. Sabandi skies for the board. I try to get Federico, Federico, in as many pick and roll scenarios to find the advantage. Burton down low, able to draw contact. And two shots coming for an 85% free throw shooter. And Federico right here. This is Pitt taking advantage of the pick and roll. Federico, the dive guy. Burton knew all along he was going to draw two. And with that length and athleticism of Federico, he can deliver the ball. A football reference, if you will, high point that thing for the alley oop finish. What's Jamarius Burton's case for ACC Player of the Year? I mean, at the end of the day, best player on the best team. Do you have to go any further than that? I mean, that's usually how this thing works. But there's guys in the fold that have had exemplary seasons as well. Isaiah Wong comes to mind. But Jamarius Burton, what he's done here for culture as a voice, turning around a team pick to finish last. And right now they sit at first place. It's really hard to argue. It's really hard to argue for player of the year that he's not the player of the year. We know Jeff Capel is going to be the coach of the year. When you asked him, who's your alpha? He didn't really hesitate. He said, Burton. And that's why I asked. I wanted to know that because that's an intangible 
that looms large in that conversation. He's the guy who's restored the culture and fortified that locker room. That matters. Leshevsky catch and shoot. Rims out, Savandi there to clean. Leshevsky wanted that. He was in catch and release position from Gecko. Here comes Burton again against Ryan, one of the best defenders in the conference. Burton down low, trying to bully his way in, and Lubin secures the board. That would have been a change in momentum, quite honestly, if Burton was able to complete that in isolation, playing bully ball. Couldn't punctuate. Ryan, the three-time captain. Now Wirtz on the dribble drive, kicks to an open Hammond. His three falls, 16 for Marcus Hammond. Nike Sabani got caught ball watching. On the dribble drive, he's ball watching, he stood up, he's frozen, and that allows the baseline three. That help defense was rendered useless because of a lack of attention to detail from Sabani. Cummings has it stolen away. Ryan ahead of the pack and the finish. The lob hits the backboard. Notre Dame with its largest lead. They give it back up almost. And a whistle, a jump ball is called. Possession out of the kick. Cormac Ryan is one of the toughest guys in an Irish uniform. Vocal leader and exudes a toughness. And here he gets the run out off of two. Looked like a leaper there getting the easy one. Hammond, the only Notre Dame player honored before the game for senior night. They've got a lot of graduate players who all were honored a season ago. Guys like Goodwin and Leshevsky and Hammond in his final home game in an Irish uniform. 16 points. His season high is 19. Yeah, and he's been huge. I mean, he's been the leader in activating the three-point shot, which is everyone understands. It is the foundation to Notre Dame's offensive success. But without J.J. Stalling in the lineup, with that knee injury. It was critical. Somebody elevated their offensive production. It's been him and the lucky lefty this evening. Ellie Cummings driving on Leshevsky. Got the step. Could not get the roll. Gets his own rebound. Fighting for it underneath. And two shots coming. Nelly Cummings. Okay, but like if I'm in the uniform and I wasn't nearly the player that half these guys on the floor are, but Notre Dame's success over the years, that's unacceptable. Guys will be grabbing each other and saying, how does a six-foot guy in traffic get his own rebound and draw a foul? That's the toughness that's been lacking from the Irish all season long, quite frankly. And they just haven't had that low post presence and free throws not falling for Pittsburgh tonight. Friday in the NBA, a doubleheader, Jason Tatum and the Celtics will take on the team that hit reset, the Nets. That's at 7.30. And then in the West, you got Ja Morant and the, ja Morant and the Grizzlies taking on Jokic and the Nuggets. How about Jeff Capel telling us, of all the players he's recruited, you know, we said, who's the best guy? He said, you know, it's hard, but if you're talking about what they're doing at the next level, it's easy. It's Jason Tatum. Never heard of him. <laughs> I mean, what incredible talent Jason Tatum is. Are you kidding me? Uh, Capel has had a penchant for bringing in talent. It's refreshing to see that he's gotten the talent to buy in together a connected locker room, and the results speak for themselves. He's... Ryan, no good on the three. Got to go back to the 4-12, and 12, though, from the free throw line for Pitt. On the road, you're struggling. You can't leave that kind of money on the table. You simply can't. And it's uncharacteristic oh. for a team that shoots 81% yes. from the line in conference. Here comes Burton driving on Lubin. There's a Thanos move. I'll do it myself. <laughs> I love a reference. Look, Burton needs to take it upon himself. You're getting down into the second part of this second half, and you need your star to elevate. Him getting into the painted area is huge for this stagnant pit offense to this point. Out of bounds, but it stays with Notre Dame. Now, there's still a pathway back into this game for Pitt. And Notre Dame, we've seen throughout the year, now, they've struggled late in games. They've struggled to close games out. Pitt, on the other hand, has been terrific in 
one possession games down the stretch. Goodwin backing down Elliott. Does not see the ground. Now it's Ryan fouled by Cummings, his first. And Cummings is claiming there should have been an arm bar there for Cormac Ryan. And I got to admit, I ain't mad at Cummings. Not because he went to Colgate and he's smart, but because I think he had a point. Bowling green guy before that. Yeah. Leshevsky, open look. Good. They're just spreading. It, it's the same thing. These are wide open looks for guys who hover around 40% for three. Sabandi looking to drive on Lubin. Got Lubin in the air, the up and under, count it. Nike Sabandi is wired to score the basketball. And he's a high IQ guy as well. He saw Lubin having to defend him outside. He didn't beat him with that initial thrust, but he knew that he would be an excited freshman and he would get a little froggy. And the frog jumped. And when he did, Sabandi, the scorer, kept his eye on the goal, played through the contact. Big time play. And Sabandi hits a free throw. Pitt now 5 of 14 from the free throw line. 10 points for Nike Sabandi. Eight away for 1,800 for his career. Now, this is where Leshevsky needs to say, okay, they're putting some bandy on me. Let me duck down, play with my back to the basket. Empty dribbling by Ryan. That hit nothing but backboard. And now Elliott the other way. Elliott accelerates down the lane. Out of control. Burton saves it. Hits it straight away. Open three. Good look. Did not go. Those are the second chance. Those empty possessions devastating. The best three-point look off an offensive rebound amidst chaos, and Henson can't convert. Been a theme tonight. Pitt's got 10 offensive rebounds, only six second chance points. Yeah, you got to capitalize on these looks. Irish are vulnerable on a glass. Hammond with 18. Hey, it's too easy. It's, it's just too easy. It's a quintessential Irish offensive performance when they're dangerous. Exploiting matchups and playing in space. Out of dribbling by Cummings. He'll drive on Goodwin. Gets tied up. Held ball is the call. Possession arrow. Notre Dame. Jeff Cable wants a foul. A lot of contact there from Dane Goodwin. Let's take another look. Cummings thought he had him on his hip. No, that, I mean, that, that's a foul. That's a bear hug. <laughs> that's unbelievable. That's a foul. Yeah. Coach Cable had a tip for remaining composed on that one. That was egregious. Leshevsky, meanwhile, setting the hard screen on Sabandi. And contact down low. And they get a foul on Sabandi. Bodies flying. Those are the Pitt Notre Dame matchups from the early 2000s that I recall. That was expected sequence in those games. Games play differently now, but look, a lot's on the line. Guys are expected to play tough. You guys see it. Notre Dame just two and 16 in league play. They've lost seven in a row. Pitt, meanwhile, in first place by itself in the ACC, ranked for the first time in seven years. Panthers with a win would secure a double bye in the ACC tournament and clinch at least a share of the regular season title as Leshevsky draws the foul. And a technical foul issued by John Gaffney toward the pit bench. That rocking chair would look great in our new house. Oh, a new house. All well, his beef was that they called Blake Hinson for a foul on that Nate Leshevsky drive. That was a foul. Capel gets teed up. And so far, everything that can go wrong has gone wrong for Pitt. And look, it was a foul from Hinson. It was the right whistle. It was stewing, though, from Coach Capel because there was the egregious foul on a Cummings drive where he was bear hugged by Dane Goodwin. And I think once you start getting those juices flowing where you feel like you're not getting the whistle, sometimes you don't see things clearly on this side. However, you're trailing by 17 with everything on a line. I do believe Coach Capel's got to be more in control to not allow any more points given up by losing his cool. 
You and I called Florida State Miami over the weekend. We saw Florida State make the biggest comeback in the history of the ACC. Are you writing Pitt off right now, or is there still an avenue back into this game? There's still an avenue because, look, Notre Dame has struggled to close games out all season long. I mean, they've been a losing group this year. Call it what it is. You're looking at the team that's at top of the ACC right now. So 19 is a hefty deficit. When I was in South Florida with you, and we saw what happened there. So tell me why not for Pitt tonight. 19-point lead, the largest of the game for Mike Bray's Irish. He has been more stoic and reserved than usual tonight. Season's taken a, a, a toll on Coach. You know, me and Coach have a great relationship. I'm lucky as a former player. You hope to have that with your coach as you grow older. It's been difficult. He did not expect this season to be what it is with the amount of veteran experience that was returning. And despite the fact they can't really figure out why, obviously defensive struggles, but they never expected this. And the foul is uh, Notre Dame away from the ball. You got to tell folks the pitch that Mike Bray made to you to convince you to keep your commitment to Notre Dame. So we made references to Capel and Bray and their connection from Duke. Coach Capel played with one of the all-time greats in Grand Hill. When Coach Bray came over from Delaware with that Duke background, he said to me, you remind me of Grand Hill. I said, soul. It's the first time, <laughs> the only time Coach Bray lied to me. See, he knew the right way to convince you. Just got to butter up that Cornette ego. We laugh about it all the time. Uh, Coach has had a lot of great talents. However, I was not one to turn into Grand Hill. Unfortunate for everybody in the Notre Dame fan base. <laughs> you had a heck of a career, and you were part of his early teams. Mike Bray had instant success the minute he got to South Bend. Three NCAA tournament berths in his first three seasons. Boy, free throws have just derailed Pitt. And we get a foul on Federico. Pitt tonight, 5 of 16 from the line. Totally out of character. I will say, for Notre Dame, something you got to start to worry about. This is not a deep team. Yeah. Wirtz has three fouls. Ryan's got three. Hammond has three. And Goodwin has three. I mean, the clock is only ticking, and it's a 20-point game. Uh, Pitt needs to start digging in and getting stops, stacking them quickly. Leshevsky over Federico offline. It's a great challenge for Federico. That time he was locked in, hand in the face, challenged the offering. Henson puts it on the floor, sweeps to the lane. Great sequence. Got to stop, played fast. They have the ability to do this. Notre Dame, when they've been punched, we haven't seen too many counter punches this season. The lead is 18. And entanglement on the perimeter. And another foul against Pitt. That's on Hinson. That'll be his third, I believe. Fifteen points, nine rebounds for Hinson. Hinson trying to trying to be disruptive with Goodwin here. A little extracurricular activity, no whistle. Clock at 10. Ryan drives on Federico, got the step, missed the bunny. The length clearly bothers some. His quarterback Ryan got to the rim. Burton now the other way, kicks it out to Sabandi. On the drive, strong to the 10. That's got to be the method now. Now you've got those driving lanes, you've had some success. Cleaner looks from three will open up, and then this offense for Pitt returns to being dynamic. Federico guarding Goodwin. It comes back to worse. Less than 10 to shoot. Notre Dame again working deep into the shot clock with a big lead. Ryan, a long three. Does not go. There's Hinson. Got attack. And Sabandi will push. Got attack if you're pit. Continue with that initial thrust of early offense. Getting downhill. There comes Burton dipping. Federico had the rebound. It's knocked out of bounds. But a foul against Notre Dame right here on the floor. 
Let's see who they call it on. It is Goodwin, and that is number four. Right here, Burton does a good job of getting to the rim and just, just out-toughing him in this sequence. Federico fighting down low, the loose ball foul. And Federico's got to convert here from the line. Federico 0 for 3 at the line. Mike Bray putting Van Allen Lubin back in. And if you're Notre Dame, you got to clean up the defensive rebounding. That's where Pitt can get back into this game. And they've made some headway there. Irish also need to get back defensively. And that early offense, it's no longer Pitt filling lanes looking for the three. It's saying, how tough are you in the painted area? Because we're on our way there for layups. Pitt's getting it. Both free throws good. A lot of points left on the board by Pitt at the free throw line, but Federico gets those two. The Irish lead is 14. They led by as many as 20. Wirtz almost trapped. Now it's Ryan leaning in. Not there. Gets his own rebound. Wirtz the three. Good. It's devastating for Pitt. You built another stop and you give up a second chance and a clean three-point look, and it's 17 once again. Federico sets the screen for Burton, looking for the lob and a turnover. I don't like the body language from Pitt either. I haven't seen this group as connected as they've been. They're not talking to each other. They look a little deer in headlights. This group's won a lot of games by being connected. I like to see these guys huddle up, look at each other, and build that belief. Right now, it looks like they're just gas from trying to defend in space for the majority of this evening. So Bandy went for the steal and picks up the foul. You don't often see this many fouls called in a game featuring Notre Dame. No, and it's again, it's because of the chaotic, you know, out of sorts defense. That the, the, Pitt Panthers have been tonight. I mean, they're chasing they're, they're, the closeouts. They're getting blown by, and they're reaching. This is a Panthers team that's desperate to figure out a way to halt this Notre Dame offense. There is an issue with the scoreboard, we're told. Scoreboard had six fouls, and that was the seventh foul, so it is a bonus situation. That was the issue. Wirtz, a 75% free throw shooter. Notre Dame last year, such a great three-point shooting team. And, you know, they've been down. Wirtz has been part of that. A guy who was 40% plus the previous three years, down to 33% this year. These are highly skilled guys. And what you're seeing from Notre Dame is the shot-making ability has elevated them to dig in and guard a little bit, show a, a side of toughness that's been severely lacking this season. But four of those five guys on the floor can be deadly from beyond the arc. Cummings only two points, no assists. He came into the game third in the conference in helpers. Elliott's not been a factor either. Shot clock at eight. Sabandi all by himself, able to draw the foul. Goodwin was in the area, but it will be on Lubin. I like the Pitt Panthers in attack mode. The three-point shot just hasn't, it hasn't gotten going tonight. But what they have been able to do is get to the rim and draw fouls. And for Notre Dame games to be historically fast, because there's not a lot of fouls, we're starting to hear the whistle a lot here down the stretch. Another Unbelievable. free throw. Unbelievable. Now, these are good free throw shooters. At some point, there might be some conspiracy theories out there. <laughs> they did something to the rims here for Coach Bray's final game, because this is uncharacteristic 
of the Panthers. Well, Notre Dame's 12 out of 14 from the line. Sabandi gets that one. He's three out of six tonight. Eight for 20 at the free throw line. That's a lot of bonus points. Wirtz. Now Hammond. Three not there. Federico the rebound. Danny's going to try to attack. Keep taking it to the basket. Draw those fouls. Yeah, he's going to try to attack. And Sabandi does that. That is yeah. the MO now for Pitt. They know Notre Dame doesn't have depth. They know Notre Dame has a number of players in foul trouble. It is attack mode. You can see Sabandi, he saw blood in the water. And when he got that basketball coming across the timeline, it was like, okay, he's going to see if they can keep him in front. They have not been able to in the second half. So that was four on Wurtz. Goodwin has four. Ryan, Hammond, and Lubin all have three. So if you're Notre Dame, you know this. You know there's not depth. You know you have guys in foul trouble. How do you play it defensively? Well, now, if you're offensively in your pit, you attack even more because you know you have a penchant for drawing that whistle. The Irish have to be more disciplined. Have to make them meet a chest and retreat. That first defensive effort needs to be elevated, and we've not seen multiple efforts from them guarding so far in the second half. And again, that's something that have plagued the Irish all season. Seven to shoot, Ryan down low to Lubin against Federico. On the ground, big loose ball. Sabandi wrestles it away and called for the travel. Sabandi's got to understand you cannot get up with the basketball. An unforced error. And this unstoppable Irish offense this evening will get another go when we return here in South Bend. That rocking chair would look great. They got all the little debris off the court. Bracketology in the ACC. Man, this league has taken a beating with perception nationally, even within the league. Pitt's a team that is leading the conference. They're a projected nine seed. And the yin and yang of tonight, if they win, Joe Lenardi says they are a lock no matter what happens from here on out. If they lose, all of a sudden, now you either got to beat Miami or win one in Greensboro to feel safe on Selection Sunday. Leshevsky on the drive, able to draw the foul. Good job from Leshevsky on the dribble drive to absorb that contact. Leshevsky at his size, he's never out of control when he has used that head fake and gets downhill. He plays within himself and good footwork to draw contact and avoid a charge from Federico. Federico. Third foul on Federico. Leshevsky, an 87% free throw shooter. Free throw disparity tonight. Notre Dame, 13 out of 15. Pitt, 10 for 22. Federico with a two-handed slam. 68-52, less than seven minutes to play here at Purcell Pavilion. Lubin, great position, the basket counts, and a free throw coming. Impressive delivery from quarterback Ryan to not force, to wait for the moment where the defense was vulnerable. Federico and Burton, and he waits to draw them both, allows the big and Lubin to be settled on that low block to catch and finish, putting the freshman in position to succeed as a dive guy. The Irish, they're on their way to one of their best offensive outputs all season. Cummings fouled on a three-point shot by Lubin. That's four on the freshman and three shots coming. There's your freshman mistake. Now 
Cummings is another one. Jordan, he came into the game 48 out of 55 from the line of the season. Missed his only two tonight. And these are these are big. If you want to try to claw your way back in, you got to have all three. When we talked to Jeff Capel last week, when we had Pitt at Georgia Tech, he was worried about this game. Given all the hysteria, all the noise, the emotions of this being Mike Bray's final home game, he said, yeah, going to play Notre Dame under those circumstances is different and far more challenging. Look, I'd love to say you're playing for pride every time you step on the floor. There's an element to that. But beyond that, the Irish had nothing to play for for a lion's share of this season because of how poorly it went and how fast it went there. This is one of the moments where they could say, all right, let's get motivated. Our crowd's going to show up, and let's win one for the guy that brought us here to South Bend. And you've seen them. Cummings gets all three with a shirtless Mike Bray being waved in his face. I'll tell you, the, the, the Irish aren't in the clear. Six and a half minutes left is a lot of basketball especially with how explosive this Panthers offense can be, but they have to go. The spacing tonight has been so good for Notre Dame. Hammond has 18 points, shot clock winding down, crosses over Federico, and he's got 20, his high in a Notre Dame uniform. And again, that's Federico, Federico defending a point guard. Burton blocked by Lesheski. Gets it back and draws the foul on Lesheski. That's only the second on Nate Lesheski. I mean, this is Federico Federico trying to be in a stance. I mean, the crossover, the space. Federico, to his credit, did all he could to extend the hand in a late contest, but Hammond's licking his chops in that matchup. Missed free throw by Pitt. 13 out of 26 for a team that shoots better than 80% at the line in conference. Wow. Burton missed them both. Wow. That's an 85% free throw shooter. I mean, Coach Capel, I'm just trying to read his, his motion on the side. He just shook his head. It said, wow, what else can you say? The previous two games, Pitt was 38 out of 42 at the strike. It's insane what's 38 out of 42 in the previous two games. And tonight, 13 out of 27. 13 out of 27. That's 14 points. It's an 18-point game. The foul on Sabandi, his third. That sums it up, doesn't it? It's all going right for the Irish. You had to know something was weird in the air when we arrived on campus and it was 60 degrees on the first day of March and the sun was shining. That should have maybe been the tell that uh, something's a little off here in town. Cummings three, rebounded by Federico, a foul down low. It's on Goodwin, and that's five on Dan Goodwin. He's done. <laughs> Dan Goodwin gets a well-deserved round of applause as the crowd comes to his feet, celebrating his accomplishments over a five-year career. Nobody has played more games for Notre Dame in the history of Irish basketball. A coach's son from the suburbs of Columbus, mild manner guy, scratch golfer, just a, a, a good representative of this university. And he never expected what's happened this season, but as you reflect on what's been a five year career, a lot for him to be proud of in front of his home crowd. Guy took me on a golf course and it was ugly. How ugly. Uh, he's a scratch call. You do the rest. Oh, 
Hammond has 20 points tonight to lead all scores. Turns it over. It's a kick. It's a clear kick from Federico. No call. Sabandi driving on Lubin. A basket plus one. Pitt not going away yet. 74-58. 4.49 left in the free throw for Sabandi. Love the mentality from Sabandi. Again, gets it matched up against the big end Lubin. And he goes into attack mode. He's done a great job there. And for Lubin, that's five fouls. So Goodwin has fouled out. Lubin has fouled out. Robbie Carmody checks in. Carmody along with Cormac Ryan, Leshesky, Wirtz, and Hammond. And outside of Matt Zona, there's really no reliable depth outside of the guys on the floor. Robbie Carmody hasn't scored a basket since when, Anish? December 4th, 2020. <laughs> It's a heck of a spot to throw a young man like that in because of attrition in the final five minutes against the best team in the ACC. 16-point lead for Notre Dame. They've led by as many as 20. Irish led by 14 at the break. Shot clock down to five. Hammond puts it on the floor. Ran into an ambush. Words lets it fly. Air ball. And here comes Pitt. Burton's had one place. Burton looking to go to work on Ryan. Draws the contact, no whistle. Basket good. And the lead is 14 for Notre Dame. Here we go. A timeout called for the Irish. Notre Dame's got two timeouts left. Can the Irish close one out? Or does Pitt have a big comeback left? Geico has been offering saving. Ryan Humphrey, who played and coached with Mike Bray. Lafonso Ellis, one of the all-time greats. His number hangs in the rafters. Our colleague, the gentle giant. He had all sorts of travel logistics to get here, but he wanted to be here for Mike Bray's final game. I wonder why, because Fonz is one of the best human beings to ever live. Didn't play for Bray. Uh, Fonz likes to stay out of the out of the spotlight here at Notre Dame, despite the fact that his jersey's in the Raptors and he means everything to the program. But he texted me and said, just wanted to be here to support because it truly is a brotherhood. A turnover by Notre Dame. Subandi thundering down court, driving to the basket. Basket no good, but he is fouled. And two shots coming for Nike Subandi. This one isn't quite over yet. Everyone gets a BK stacker. For that's what Notre Dame's doing. Foul trouble is real. Goodwin, Lubin, both have fouled out. Hammond picked up his fourth before we went to break. Wirtz has four fouls. J.J. Starling is out tonight. There's only 3.35 left. You've got a 14-point lead. Can the Irish bring this Marlin to shore? I did not have Hemingway on the bingo card late, but much respect here from a former English major. I guess not former. I'm just an English major. Uh, look, if, if Pitt can generate stops like they put together, continue to get downhill, earn it from the free throw line without time moving off the clock, this thing can get to single digits here quick, and then you never know. The lead was 20 earlier in this half. It's down to 12. Three and a half to go. On the floor for Notre Dame. Wirtz, Leshesky, Hammond, Matt Zona, and Cormac Ryan. The Irish are going to work some clock, it appears, before they try and get a look. Shot clock. Inside 10. Wirtz thought about it. Now gets free from 18. Hits the back iron. That looked to be a foul. Wow. No call. Now they call it. At first glance, it looked like Zona had pushed off. The foul is called against Pitt. 3.05 to go. Cummings with his third. A whole lot of contact on this loose ball. That is clearly Henson with yeah. his left hand grabbing jersey, body, booty, everything. And <laughs> no whistle. It was Henson. But they call the foul on Cummings. They got the second guy. And now Leshesky, an 87% free throw shooter to the line. 
where he's now four of five tonight. And if you're the Irish, if you're an Irish fan, you're almost appreciative. It's not Zona that they called the guy being, they, they didn't call the foul on Henson on Zona, but it puts Nate Leshevsky at the free throw line, a much better shooter. Zona has not attempted a free throw this season. Cummings over Zona, hits. That's a three. Jeff Capel wanted a foul. No foul is called. We get a timeout on the floor. 76-65, 2.53 to go. And Cummings believed that Zona got into his space and didn't allow him to land. He's right. I mean, he's right. Got in there underneath the foot. You gotta allow Cummings a landing zone. Notre Dame this season has had four games where they led by at least 10 points and lost. They led by 14 at the break. They led by 20 in the second half tonight. Pitt has trimmed it to 11 with less than three minutes to go. So if you're going old man in the sea, you'd almost call this the scarlet letter for the Irish squad. That's Hawthorne, not Hemingway. But, but I'm saying hey, so we're just going with some of the greats, right? Uh, it, it's played this group, no question. It's in the back of their mind. Meanwhile, some Panthers team desperate, desperate to earn that tournament berth for the first time since 16, and also to clinch a share of the regular season title. Notre Dame nearly turned it over. Pressure by Pitt. Up ahead to Leshevsky as the Irish clear. And they're gonna use up a lot of clock here as we get to two and a hook left in regulation. Ryan with nine to shoot. Wirtz into the corner, Leshevsky. They still play keep away. Shot clock at three. Ryan against Federico. Dips in, dips under, and scores. They're going to have to review that to see if it got off in time for Cormac Ryan. It's going to be close. But again, he saw Federico as the defender, and his eyes got big, and he attacked the rim. Did he get it off in time? And he stay tuned. That's, that's a clean basket. Clarence is going to give us the go here. Clarence Armstrong, part of this esteemed crew. Kept it quick, kept it moving, because it feels like we've been here for three hours tonight at Coach Bray's last ball game. He's going to keep the South Bend crowd around for one last hurrah. And then he's going to go close down the linebacker afterwards. Are you going? You made a lot of references. Are you in? Listen, it was a big story yesterday. Am I going? No. I'm too old for the standing in a place where I can't move my shoulders and run I'm into with somebody. You. I'm with you. I'm also carrying but around. With respect to the folks who go. I'm carrying around a lot more weight than you. At least you can be uh, mobile, if you will, in there. And you've got a great turtleneck on. That'll play huge at linebacker. Figured there's going to be a bunch of 6'8", six, 6'9", six, guys there. 5'10", <laughs> sort of gets lost in the shuffle. <laughs> Zona picked up his first foul. Both teams in the double bonus. Mike Bray said yesterday, there's no curfew today. And we look ahead to the final games of the regular season. Saturday for Pitt, they go to Miami. Pitt still could have a chance at an ACC regular season title with a win on Saturday, even if they lose tonight. There are some wonky tiebreakers involved. And then you've got NC State and Clemson. That is a must win for Clemson, which is on the wrong side of the bubble. Yeah, Notre Dame has an opportunity, if they can play spoiler here, to continue that trend. Now they're in Greenville. Excuse me, Clemson, South Carolina. Fly into Greenville, which is a great time. Two minutes to go, 11-point lead for Notre Dame. And Wirtz is fouled by Cummings. So two shots for Trey Wirtz, 75% free throw shooter. Now the difference tonight, it's been free throws. Notre Dame 18 out of 21, hit 18 out of 34. Mike Bray's final home game as Notre Dame's head coach. 
23 seasons at the helm. More wins than any other men's basketball coach in school history. 13 NCAA tournaments, two Elite Eights, and an ACC championship. Cummings drives on Zona, it rattles in. Quick basket for Pitt, quick timeout by Jeff Capel. Still an 11 point game with 151 left. Mike Bray, 482 wins. Digger Phelps second on that list in attendance tonight as he is for most Notre Dame home games. And you think of the program that Bray inherited. Digger had a great run when he was here for 20 years. Then through the 90s, Notre Dame hit a downturn. And Mike Bray helped resuscitate a program that was beat up and beat down. You were a part of that. You were here pretty much from the beginning. You got here in Mike Bray's second season. I'm glad you get to see it at the end as a former Notre Dame forward. Well, thank you, Anish. My, my buddy, I appreciate that from you. And look, it's what was alluring to me about this university and this program was they were on the verge of returning. And all the tradition obviously starts with football. There's some rich tradition here in basketball, thanks to Digger Phelps in his 20 years. And I wanted to be a part of that. And I'm very proud of the 23 years the coaches had here and to play a role in four years of that. Uh, it, it's been pretty special. And it's kind of cool to tie it in with the Pitt Panthers uh, program that I had such a great, you know, respect for because we had some battles from 01 to 05 in the Pete and here at the Choice Center as well. Leshevsky with five to shoot. Now it's Wirtz. Well, I would have felt like the dagger if it went in instead of rebound by Henson. Door still slightly ajar for Pitt. Cummings will fire and hit. 80 to 72, 113 to go. Full court press and now the foul. I don't think that was intentional. And it also felt like a premature whistle. At least it looked like Cormac Ryan might have initiated a contact lower in the boom in distress. And here's a look. Nelly Cummings ready catch. Pump fake to get words off of his back and delivers. Quick three points. And it's still interesting here in the final 69 seconds. Ryan, 80% at the line, four for four tonight. And Jeff Capel still barking at the officials. The lead is 10 with 109 to go. The timeout is called. Notre Dame has one left, Pitt has one left. What's Jeff Cable telling his team? What is the end game strategy here? You're down 10 with a little over a minute. You know, try and get something quick. Drive and kick or drive and finish. Then try and generate some uh, in the backcourt. Try and generate a turnover. Initiate a trap. If you don't have something, you got to foul quick. They're going to try and get something going downhill. You don't need a three. Obviously, it'd be nice. If they have a driving lane, and it's quick. They're going to finish that layup. They're ideally going to look for a drive, collapse that defense, kick out to all these great shooters. Clock will start when Cummings picks it up. Cummings has scored the last nine for Pitt. Driving down the lane, throws it up wildly, and a foul is called. And now the crowd's starting to get frustrated. It's been a lot of whistles. Calls. It's been a lot of whistles tonight. Cummings on a drive. I just don't know where the contact is, is coming from. Now that foul called on Robbie Carmody. And these last five minutes have, have been moving at a snail's pace. And a lot of stoppage in play. And for Pitt, they inbounded the ball with 109. Four Chance to get off. two points with only four seconds off the clock. They want to try and make this final 65 seconds, the longest 65 in American history. 
Notre Dame this season, eight losses in conference by five points or less. And a foul is called on Hinson, who's walking away from the pack. And you can tell his fists were clenched, trying not to betray any emotion. Henson needs to watch out. The theatrics won't play well. He's been teetering on the line here this evening. So Wirtz at the free throw line. Four fouls on Henson. Cummings and Federico have four as well. to go. Cummings has scored 11 straight for Pitt. No bailout foul this time. It's knocked back. Carmody's got it. Pitt wants a jump ball. And the call is a foul on Pitt. It's on Burton. And Robbie Carmody to the free throw line looking for his first points in more than two years. Young man's dealt with a lot of injuries over his career. Never had a chance to take off like he would have hoped. It's be a pretty cool moment for this young man. Can't get that one. Missed most of his freshman year with a left shoulder injury. Then tore his left ACL while rehabbing. He suffered a broken kneecap. Missed them both. Played in one game last year. Burton the other way, uncontested. 84-76. And now a steal. Sabandi's got it. Over Carmody. Batted around, out of bounds. It stays with Pitt. 43.4 on the clock. <laughs> Nothing has come easy for Notre Dame this season, including the final minutes of this one. And they might go review this one to make this one last a little bit longer. It definitely looks like it was out of bounds on either that was Hammond or not straight words. Who's going to get a hand on this? Ultimately, it guided out of bounds. I'm not sure you saw enough there to overturn it. The original call was out of bounds on Notre Dame pit basketball. Coach Bray said there's no curfew tonight. Thankful for a lot of people who are looking to imbibe this evening over at linebacker because they're going to begin a late start over there with the with this one extending and extending and extending. Now we might not be out of here for another 45 minutes. <laughs> Notre Dame had a 19 point lead with 538 to go. Pitt has cut it to eight three times, but has not gotten closer. Cummings to inbound. It's Burton. He'll fire from deep, and it rolls in. A three is good. 84-79, two-possession game, 38 seconds to go. How much gas does Notre Dame have in the tank? Wirtz up ahead the timeline, and he is fouled. Henson was in proper position to actually take that charge, but the foul came well before the contact between Wirtz and Henson, but I like that idea from Henson. That's now four on Sabandi. It's just a tough shot. A step back to create space, gathers and delivers. It's a tough shot for Burton. Good defense, better offense. Yeah. You and I have seen some things <laughs> in the last few days. Saturday, we saw Florida State rally from 25 down in the second half. Notre Dame led this one by 20 in the second half. I mean, it's officially March. These are the kind of outcomes you expect. Pressure bust pipes, teams get tight. Wild things happen. Word stays perfect at the line tonight. 86-79. Another three. 
Federico has the offensive rebound. Back to Burton. He'll drive. The layup rims out. Lushevsky has it. Up ahead to Wurtz. Drops it off. Ryan! The athletic finish! Just a heady move, understanding the foul was coming and works. Didn't want to extend this one any longer. Dumped down to Cormac Ryan. The two-hand hook. And it looks like the Irish may actually close one out here late. Something they have been unable to do. And clearly the emotion of Coach Bray's last time out here on the sidelines gave them the extra oomph they needed to deliver. A few seconds added to the clock. Purcell Pavilion to its feet. Cummings has the easy lay-in. 9.2 seconds left. Mike Bray watching. His final home game is Notre Dame's men's basketball coach. And it's Robbie Carmody at the horn. It does not count. But Mike Bray leaves South Bend a winner in his final home game. The Irish deliver with an 88-81 win against a top 25 pit team. And Anish, I gotta tell you, great respect for obviously all programs as some emotions bleed out on the floor. You don't wanna see any 